Let's start with Police Chief Rick Smith. A police cameras are being put into place. That's already done. What will the protocol be, though, for officers turning the cameras on and off throughout their shift? And who will oversee what's released to the media and citizens? Yeah, so we are now working on the policy aspect that we've gotten through the procurement process of the body cams. So we're, we're working through those policies. We had a pilot program before um, where we, we had officers. Uh, so basically when they're in any meaningful contact, they would run a uh, body cam. Um, but there are instances where we don't want the camera on, so like sexual assaults, um, victims or witnesses, things like that. So there has to be some protocols in place of when officers are allowed to turn off the camera. Chief, would that be at the officer's discretion of turning them on and off? So there's some triggers with our system that will automatically turn them on. Like if you turn lights and sirens on a car, you can trigger a system to turn on. If a car door opens, you can trigger a system to turn on. So there's some automatics to turn it on, then to turn that off will be on the officer's part. But there'll be policies about when that occur, occur and when it cannot occur. Okay, Laura, uh, I, I know you have uh pretty deep feelings about body cameras. What's your concern or do you feel encouraged? Well, I believe that body cameras are necessary. Uh, this is the show me state, so I'm not gonna believe it until they're wearing them and they're being operational. Um, but what I will say is this, so I'm really concerned about the fact that we may not even get access ever as a public to view what's recorded when body cameras are being used, right? Because right now in Kansas City, um, I myself have sat in a courtroom while those uh, dash cam footage is being embargoed and kept from the public. And what the um, judge usually says is that's in the interest of public safety. In other words, if we the public see what's on the dash cam or hear the dash cam video, we will be outraged. I, I understand there's some concerns to that, but I think there's also concerns that everyone has, um, you know, the officers walk in private residences. They will see people at their worst. Does, does all of that footage go to every citizen in Kansas City at any point? I, I think there, there has to give some give and take here. Some people have some rights to have some bad days, to have marital problems, and, and have other things of which we're, we're called to. Um, and I frankly don't think all of that should be released to the public. But there are certain instances when we're engaged in, in activity and other things that happen, those should be released to the public. I, I think coming up with that proper policy is what's going to be important. Mayor Quinton, uh, you are, you know, smack dab in the middle. Everybody's holding you accountable for seeing all of this through. You know, I know that's part of the job. It has been a challenging year, but frankly, and I've had the chance to talk to the chief of police quite a bit, talk to Ms. McDonald as well. Um, here's the deal. Everybody wants to build as much trust and accountability as we possibly can have between the police and the community. I think that the Board of Police Commissioners, the department, have made strides. You've reported some of them, officer-involved shootings, de-escalation, working on First Amendment policies so that protesters and uh, and others know what types of things will happen and, and what the police will do. And I know the chief has been involved in those discussions as well. And we want to absolutely make sure we come out with good policies uh, for the future of policing, whether it be with body cameras or anything under the sun. What I find most important, however, is this, that people be willing to come to the table. We know that we can do better. We work every day to do better. I consider that to be my job for as long as I'm mayor to make sure that we're pushing every institution of the city. That's why, to me, this isn't just a question about what the police department's doing. It's a question about what are our laws? What are we doing with marijuana or parking tickets or anything under the sun? And we'll keep pushing there as well. But I think as we, we talk about this, I would actually say, Laura, we welcome you to help us craft this next round of policies. We want to hear from the public. Uh, and I know that Chief Smith, myself, the Board of Police Commissioners and others will be listening to the community as we roll this out. Okay, let's move on to de-escalation. We're gonna start again with you, Chief. Uh, the, the nights of the protest, one night uh, tear gas was deployed. 
Uh, there were other nights, though, when the police department was able to block off streets and protesters were able to go around the plaza peacefully. What did you learn? What did your department learn about the different situations on different nights? Yeah, it's a great question. So for 30 years, um, while I've been on the department, we were trained basically one set of tactics for crowd control. And um, within two nights, we threw all that um, manual out the window and we went based on what we thought we the re reaction from um, the crowd would be and the interaction with the police. So as you know, the first couple of nights were pretty dicey with a lot of criminal behavior. As we saw that de-escalate, we also tried to match that in our de-escalation. And, and you're right, within a couple of nights, um, we were not using any, any form of tear gas. Um, we, had, we had pulled people back. We held people in reserves. Um, we were very much trying to temper our response uh, to what was needed and what was called for at the time rather than just follow like what a basic plan was is which we which we had always done in the past. I mean I saw former commissioner of Wyandotte County Terrence Maddox getting assaulted by our police department on the plaza and his daughter being pepper sprayed in the face she's only 15 years old and they were standing on the sidewalk in a park in broad daylight when that was happening and you could tell what happened uh, former Commissioner Maddox was yelling at a police officer and that officer was provoked by that yelling and went and assaulted them in front of everyone. It made national news. And so, I mean, the chief can talk about the manual being thrown out the window, but I see that the manual gets thrown out the window whenever it's convenient for law enforcement in Kansas City. And then we, the public, again, have no power to really do anything about it. It's really frustrating for us. Mayor, you've got two very different views of how the protests were handled. How do you bring these sides together? I think we just evaluate and we talk about the, the truth and the circumstances that happened. And, and the way I see it is there were um, a lot of things that the police department did well. There were things that could be improved. There were things that are being evaluated up to and including the fact that Commissioner Maddox, I believe, has filed a legal action against the city. So I'm not going to uh, speak necessarily to that situation. I will speak to this. Um, it is incontrovertible that you saw a different response um, to night one or two of the protests versus night five. You did see the manual, I think, change, and I think, frankly, for the better. Um, you know, it was not changing the manual to protect police. Instead, it was actually changing the manual to allow protesters to walk through the streets of Kansas City, walk through the plaza, not be engaged. That was fundamentally de-escalation. And what does that show for us? What it shows for us is the fact that, yes, people do listen. I, I talked to the police chief regularly throughout um, those days. Um, I think we heard from the public regularly throughout those days. And I think if you look at Kansas City on night five as compared to New York City or Portland or Seattle or Minneapolis or any other areas where you had both protesters and police officers that were injured in more situations because there wasn't that sort of change, there wasn't the change in departmental approach or policy, then I think that there were positive steps made. Is that me saying that there cannot be improvements? Absolutely not. And is that me saying that there weren't things that if we review we would want to actually change? Absolutely not. I think the way that we say uh, and do things going forward is to say, look, we hear you, we see where we can improve, we see where policy changes are, but we also be honest. And part of that honesty is to say that there was a change in tactics, there was de-escalation, and I think that made everyone, including our officers and our community, safer.